so chapter four overview part two um, is covered here. And this is where I guess the lecture approach and the, the textbook approach kind of goes back to what um, kind of agreeing with each other. Um, the, maybe the biggest difference is in your textbook, um, they put this diff coverage of diffraction grading in chapter four. Um, and technically this is a uh, diffraction grading is an example of multi-slate interference. And that was covered in chapter three. I think I linked to it somewhere here. Um, well, I, I don't do it directly. So um, the way the lecture is organized, I talk about the multiple solid interference right before we talk about diffraction grading. Um, but uh, this is what you might want to look back at to make sure you um, you know the distinguishing features of a multiple solid interference. That in some ways, a multiple solid interference kind of looks similar to double solid interference. Um, so this is a good plot to kind of illustrate that. The separation between the, the primary principal maxima are the same. Uh, really what uh, the distinguishing feature that changes as you add more slits is that that principal maxima becomes more pronounced. So with a double slit interference, which is this purple line here, the contrast between the maximum and a little distance away from maximum isn't all that good. Like uh, this is what you, well, these plots don't really show it all that well. Well, you can see it a little bit. Um, no, not that well. <laughs> and as you add more slits, what you see is that these principal maxima, um, they, they remain strong, but these secondary maxima get smaller and smaller. So, uh, and diffraction grading is an extreme version of this where this N has been taken to be a very large number. In a typical diffraction grading, um, which has like a thousand lines per millimeter. So if your beam size is about a millimeter, then your N would be a thousand. And um, in that limit, your plot kind of looks, <laughs> it's kind of hard to demonstrate, uh, hard to see it here. So I want you to show, this, um, show different versions of this plot with a, a calculation software. And I'll do that soon. And so this is the, um, you know, contrast to what you see here with uh, what you see here with the double solid and uh, see just the, how much more uh, sh sharp, how much sharper the, the interference maxima are. So, um, so this one is one diffraction grading is probably one of the most uh, useful optical devices that use wave uh, feature of light. And the lecture uh, covers that. And I think I have, uh, yeah, demo here that kind of shows what that looks like. And when I do record your lab activity video, I'll try to show that from more varied perspective as well. Um, and the diffraction limited resolution, I, I think your textbook covers it well enough. Um, so take a look at section 4.5 and uh, make sure you understand that. Uh, conceptually, I, this is, uh, I think, a uh, uh, important thing to, learn, uh, begin to learn, which is the idea of a limit, not the calculus kind of limit, but limitation on the things we can do. That's kind of a common theme that you will see in modern physics. The classical physics is based on idealizing things, you know, um, like what happens, what would the things be like if we were able to eliminate friction and all that. And um, those idealizations, many of those are valid and realistic. And really the beginning of modern physics is realizing the places where they are not valid, that the laws of physics themselves place limits on things. And here, you know, light is a wave and the fact that light is a wave places a limit on resolution, places a limit on when geometric optics is valid, which is, you know, kind of demonstrated in the double solid interference and single solid diffraction. And um, Rayleigh criterion is a kind of, a common um, uh, practical way to illustrate that limit. Um, so, 
look at that. And your textbook also covers a couple other things which we don't spend a lot of time on. I do really encourage you to read it through, especially X-ray diffraction. Depending on what field you, if you go into like material science, X-ray diffraction gets used all the time in um, material science. Uh, th this is one of the big things that they do at the Lawrence Berkeley Lab, Advanced Light Source. Uh, it's a uh, it's an X-ray source that um, it's a, it provides an x-ray source for people who want to study material property using x-ray diffraction. So uh, it, 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 I think it's interesting. It, you should read it through it, but we won't really cover it. This is a particular arrangement, which is called the uh, Brock, uh, uh, Brock diffraction or Brock interference. Uh, we won't cover this arrangement in this class, I think. Um, so, but you know, read through it. I think it's an interesting thing for you to know.